Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and I have to admit to being a bit of a fanboy of Birmingham inks. The Birmingham Pen Company started out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and although I've never lived there myself, I went to college in Ohio, and one of my roommates lived in the Pittsburgh North Hills, and I ended up spending a fair amount of time around the city. And Birmingham Inks, at least originally, were named after Pittsburgh landmarks and history, so for me there's also some nostalgia involved here. I remember a couple of great days at the Point Park, for example. These older bottles had a little snippet of information about the ink's namesake, which I loved, but after a while they were quietly dropped from the labels. For example, here's a two-year-old bottle of Birmingham Boiler Steam, and the label lists Pittsburgh there as the company's origin. But more importantly, on the side of the bottle, we get a little bit of information about the Pennsylvania Railroad, which of course originally used steam engines. This bottle is about a year old, from April of 2021, and you can see that even though it's a bigger bottle, they've dropped the history from the label, and it's marked as being a Swift Formula ink. And finally, I got this bottle in the mail about three weeks ago, in July of 2022, and here again, the history is gone, but Birmingham has also dropped the Swift and Crisp Formula inks, lumping them all together as Keystone Formula, Pennsylvania being the Keystone State. Anyway, about a month ago, Birmingham sent around an email about a deal on a collection of new inks, so of course I bought it. And this is the box. It's been long enough that I don't really remember anything about what I ordered. I love Birmingham inks, but their shipping system is pretty bad. My orders often don't even ship for a couple of weeks after I order. My most recent couple of boxes shipped from a warehouse in Missouri, so maybe things are changing, but if the print quality on this packing slip were better, you'd be able to see that this one is intended for someone named Jessica in a completely different state, so I'm not optimistic. But behind the packing slip, we do have the sturdy Birmingham postcard, which is always pretty cool, and behind that, is a postcard made from an old snapshot of the Liberty Bridge, it looks like, over the Monongahela River. Here's an ink filling coaster. I never actually use them, but I really like them anyway. And finally we get to the ink. Birmingham does a great job with packing orders, and their packaging is really beautiful. I love the copper foil and the textured boxes, really nice. Here we have basil pesto, I guess I'll go ahead and open this now. Here's elderberry. Here's a little bonus bottle of molten tin. I'm curious to see what that's all about. Here we have agave. This one is oil beetle. This was the one that originally grabbed my attention. And finally, this is cherry blossom. Excellent. So, let's see what these inks look like. I will start with Agave. I lost an SD card full of footage for this video, so don't be surprised when the continuity is a little bit wonky. I had to reshoot a bunch of stuff weeks after I started. Anyway, I'm going to start by swatching this ink on my color ring on some Midori paper, which is ivory colored, some Rhodia, which is clean white, and some Tomoe River, which is just slightly warm. I'll speed this up and let it dry. 
and here they are, mostly dry at least. The ink color is pretty similar on all of the papers this time, although it's a little warmer on the Midori, of course, but it's a generally nice greenish turquoise that has some good looking dark shading on these swabs. Color-wise, it's a little greener than Birmingham Fountain Turquoise. It's similar to Pen BBS 286, but the Birmingham doesn't seem to sheen at all. Dominant Industry Lake is a little brighter and bluer in places, but they're pretty similar. Pen BBS 507 is quite a bit greener, but Lamy Tourmaline is pretty close, though it does sheen a bit. Diamine Steel Blue is in the ballpark, but doesn't really shade as darkly. It's a little lighter overall. And Schaefer Scrip Green is surprisingly bluer for an ink called Green, but it's my cheapest ink in this color range. It was only $3 for a 50 milliliter bottle. Now for a writing sample. I will look at this on three papers, Cosmo Air Snow, Rhodia, and Midori, just for a bit of variety. Here you can see the ink from a 1.5 mm stub nib and a broad nib. There was a modest amount of shading from both pens, nice vibrant color, and the flow was on the wet side of average. I sort of like this color on the Midori paper, but I think I prefer it on the white ones. Next, let's take a look at the basil pesto. This ink looks quite a bit more brown than I was expecting, although as it dries, it does turn a little more green, I see. These are my swatches on the Kolorang and on the Tomoe River. And you can see that the Japanese paper is a little bit cooler in tone, and the Kolorang is warmer and a little greener. And I don't have any greens that are very similar. This antique sepia shares a little similarity with the basil pesto on the Tomoe River, and this Birmingham arugula is also in the ballpark, but is more saturated and a bit greener. The same is true of Diamine Safari, but more so. This sailor ink has some of the browns of the basil pesto, but again, it's quite a bit more saturated. And the same thing is true of this Pen BBS cedar. Even this Papier Plume Moss Green is more saturated, and I find a lot of their inks to be too watery for my taste. Okay, so if you'll indulge me for a second here, I'm gonna take some direct color readings from these swatches and see if it's just my eyes. I will take some readings from the lighter portions. Oops, I'd better actually open the lens cap first. And okay, here are the hex and RGB values, and I'll take a few more. Now this is a product and swatch photo from Birmingham's website. If I extract the colors from this image, the bulk of them fall into this range, though some of them are darker like this, and some are even darker, like this. Now, if I overlay the colors that I read from my color meter across the top, the bulk were in this range, with some here and some here. And they're quite a bit more brown, so it's not just my eyes. Anyway, on to the writing samples. Here again, we have some samples on ruled Rhodia and plain Tomoe River. The samples look about like what I'd expect. There's some shading, and I was surprised to see a little bit of feathering on the Rhodia. On the Tomoe River, there's a cool effect with the color drying around the edges of each stroke, so it looks like my letters are outlined sometimes. All right, up next we have Oil Beetle. I'm going to swatch this one on Rhodia, Tomoe River, Cosmo Air Light, and Midori.
The first Rhodius swatch was strangely thin, so I'm going to redo that one. And with those dry, here are the Rhodia and Tamoy River swatches a bit closer. And this is the Cosmo Air Light and the Midori. And there's a little bit of reddish sheen on both of them. Let me show you some more Birmingham inks that this reminds me of. Here's Oil Beetle, of course. And then this is Boiler Steam, which I mentioned earlier in the video. It's pretty much identical. Now here's Supercell. This one is not quite as dark and it's bluer. And here we have Heron, which is again pretty similar to Oil Beetle, but maybe a bit greener. And finally, this is Petroleum. This one is also pretty dark, but it's much more green. And if we move beyond Birmingham inks, there are plenty of others, of course, but I also just bought this one. This is Waringal, for whom the bell tolls, which is pretty much the same color, but it does produce a bit of sheen with heavy application. Now, here are some writing samples with Oil Beetle on Tomoy River and Rhodia. On both papers, the ink looks nearly black where it's thick, and you only really see the color in the thinner areas. Flow was good, and I didn't have any troubles with feathering here, even with the flex nib. Now here we have Molten Tin, which was the free gift ink with this package of inks. Again, I'm swatching on my color ring on Tomoy River, Clairefontaine, and Midori. This dries down to a low saturation mauve. I don't really collect many inks in this color range, so let me just show you how this one is different from the other two similar inks from this order. Here is Cherry Blossom, which is considerably more red, and here's Elderberry, which looks very similar but darker. This is how it looks on Rhodia paper, and here's some Tomoe River. I like the color, but I guess I'd prefer something a little darker. And luckily, that's what we have here. This is, of course, Elderberry. Here, I'm swatching on the color ring, Midori, Rhodia, and Tomoe River. This ends up as a really nice, deep, dark purple. It's not unlike Pen BBS Beethoven, and it's a little less saturated than Noodler's 1984 version 3. Birmingham Violet Starling is pretty similar too, but Birmingham Boysenberry is quite a bit more saturated and bluer, I think. And Pop Art Purple is definitely more blue and saturated, and Robert Oster Monsoon Clouds is pretty much the same color. Birmingham's Waterfront Dusk is similar to Elderberry, but more red, and this Diamine Damson is in the same ballpark, but it's not as dark. Oh, here's another Waterfront Dusk. And here's Pen BBS 95, which is more of a grape purple. This J. Arban is more like the Waterfront Dusk, and the Krishna Dilly is like the Diamine Damson. Anyway, when I'm actually writing with this ink, I really like the color. Again, this one is on ruled Rhodia paper and plain Tomoe River. With most of my pens, it often looks like a black in the dark areas and just gets pops of color in the lighter areas, which is cool. That makes it a much more practical ink for me. 
In drier pens, especially on Tomoya River, there's a good amount of shading, and the color comes through nicely all around. And now, the final ink from this order, Cherry Blossom. You can see the papers I'm swatching these on. And the end result is a color that I guess I'd call a dirty pink. It has some similarity to Birmingham Cranberry Twinkle, but it's redder, and of course it doesn't have any glitter in it. Molten Tin, as you've already seen, is bluer. Birmingham Twilight is similar, but more red, and so is this one. But Cherry Blossom is still quite a bit more purple than things like Diamine Pink Ice. When I write with it, it doesn't look so dirty. It just looks like a nice dark pink, and I really like how it looks on this Tomoe River paper. I might as well mention that none of these inks are water resistant. In the end, I'm pretty happy with this bunch. I don't know, which of these is your favorite? Sometimes I think that if Birmingham kept re-releasing Oil Beetle under different names, I'd just keep buying it, which is silly. I just bought a bottle of Waringal's For Whom the Bell Tolls, which is exactly the same color too. Am I the only one who accidentally, or maybe intentionally, collects the same colors of ink from different companies? Let me know if you do the same thing. And I think I'll leave it at that for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section, and of course, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Enjoy your pens and ink out there, everyone, and don't forget to actually use them.